If you happen to watch last week's video, you'll know that we went to Pottery Barn and got loads of Christmas inspiration for just your general home decor. But today's video, we are going to be focusing on ornaments. So there's a lot of fun DIY projects for all of us to try. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. For the first DIY ornament, it is coming to us from Pottery Barn, and it is this ceramic and wood bell ornament with a twine ribbon. And the last time I was actually at Dollar General, I came across this set of two bells for just $5. So the bigger bell I'm gonna do something different with that I'll show you just a sneak peek of, but the smaller bell I thought was the perfect size to make this ornament. And then to hang it, I ended up just using the twine that these bells originally came with because that was similar to the inspiration from Pottery Barn. Now for the wooden piece that was going to go on the inside of this bell, I didn't have any scrap pieces of wood that would be this size, but I did have scrap driftwood in my stash. So I decided to choose the longest one that I had and I just hot glued it to that center prong that the bell was originally hanging from. What was nice too is that metal inside was kind of weak, so I was able to kind of manipulate that driftwood piece to be directly in the center very easily. And then the last thing I did was I just took my lighter very carefully and I just burned down those fibers so it was nice and smooth. And because the other bell was so big, I just decided to make it into some shelf decor, so I just removed that top hoop and added my own, and this is the end result. The next ornament project is coming to us from Crate and Barrel, and that is to make these berry and pine filled ornaments. So to start at the thrift store, I came across this huge bag of clear ornaments for just $2. As I was opening all of the ornaments, I noticed one of them had some blue filling already inside, so I just decided to remove it so I could start fresh, and I'm going to make a set of eight of these. So the first thing I did was just removed all of these caps because I'm actually going to cap them with something else that I'll show you guys in a little bit. But now it's just time to prep the ornaments for filling. So it's helpful to have a cup for the ornament to kind of sit on top of and a little bit inside of, so that way you just have a little bit more flexibility when you're filling these. And the first thing I'm gonna fill it with is this faux snow from the Dollar Tree. Tree. it's helpful to just cut a slit actually at the bottom rather than open the top because it makes a lot less of a mess and believe me this stuff is messy with the snow all filled now it's just time to add the greenery and the berries so I ended up finding all of my greenery and berries and things like that at the thrift store and paid about a dollar for each of them so that is a really affordable price point so I had eight ornaments total and I decided four of them would be strictly greenery and the other four were gonna be berries mixed with a little bit of greenery as well I ended up adding about three to to four stems of the greenery in each ornament and then for the berries I found that it was helpful to just kind of coil it around a little bit and that's just because it makes it a little bit easier to fill and I just kept repeating that process in both sets of these ornaments until they were completely filled and you guys might remember in last week's Pottery Barn video that I found these beautiful ornaments and I stuck them in a thrifted brass bowl but I really loved the caps of these and it felt like such a waste if you can't even see them in this bowl they should be better displayed elsewhere Elsewhere. So I actually stole the caps from these ornaments and I placed them on our DIY ornaments to get it to be as close as possible to those crate and barrel inspiration ornaments. And one thing that I noticed is this is always how I used to previously hang my ornaments on those traditional kind of paperclip looking hooks. But on every high end home decor site, when they're displaying their Christmas ornaments, they are almost never using those hooks. So they almost always use ribbon or twine or suede ribbon or something like that. So going forward, I think that's what I'm gonna do as well, just to give it a more elevated look in the end. One of these ornaments from Crate and Barrel is $8.95, and I was actually able to make a set of eight of these for less than that. For the third DIY ornament, it's coming to us from CB2, and that is these really beautiful and modern marble swirl ornaments. I ended up thrifting this pack of 15 gold ornaments. Now they are glass, which I think might have affected the way this project turned out. So I did wanna mention that these are glass, they are not plastic. But what really sold me on these was the shade of gold because it matches my kitchen cabinetry pulls perfectly. So the first thing I did was I just grabbed some kebab sticks and attached them to the caps of these ornaments. I also added some frog tape just to make sure they were nice and secure before we hydro dip them. So I tried a couple different methods of spray paint. I first added this white gloss spray paint and then black over top of it. But the end result is just not really what I was looking for. It ended up being really clumpy. I think that gloss spray paint was just a bit too severe 
behavior for this project. So after that, I just dumped that water, started fresh using only the black semi-gloss and that worked out really well. What I love so much about this project is that every ornament is just slightly different, but you get an overall similar effect. For each of these ornaments, I'm continuing to use the same water with the same spray paint spray to the top. I'm not adding more spray paint or anything like that. I'm just continuing to use the same mixture until all of them are complete. So out of the eight that I tried, I would say six turned out really well. I took them outside and sealed them so they would stay nice and protected. And then I brought them back inside once the sealant had dried and I just decided to add these caps on instead just to further give it a more modern look. And also I think I'm going to add some suede ribbon to the top of these just to really amp up the modernness of this DIY project. But I love how these came out and it's definitely something I recommend you guys try. Project number four brings us to making some glittery icicles. So this inspiration came from Pottery Barn. These are actually kind of affordable, I would say even for Pottery Barn. I came across these ones at the thrift store and they were only 50 cents, but I knew I would have to spray paint these a lot to get the look that I wanted. So I opted for these Dollar Tree ones instead. Before painting them with that glittery mixture, I did decide to spray paint them just once with some champagne colored spray paint that I will link in the description box down below for you guys. For the glittery mixture, I found this glitter glue at the Dollar Tree and I mixed the silver and the gold colors together so that way it kind of had a similar look to what I saw on Pottery Barn's website. So to apply this glue, I just did so using a small paintbrush and then I let those dry. I was able to create a set of six of these as well, but instead of $29.50, I did it for just five bucks. For the next DIY ornament, we are going to be making a plaid ball ornament, and I love these ones from Pottery Barn, but they're $12.50 a piece, which is not the cheapest ornament in the world. So to start, I ended up finding this foam ball at Dollar General for $2.50, and the first thing I'm going to do actually is just take some frog tape and just tape that top section off there before adding my hot glue, because I didn't want the hot glue to disintegrate that top piece. So I had some suede ribbon in my stash, and I'm just going to apply a small dab of hot glue to the top of the center of this ball and I'm then going to attach the knot piece of my suede ribbon and let that kind of fuse together. So you might remember I found two of these plaid napkins at my thrift store for just 50 cents and I'm just going to take a rubber band and just kind of ruche the fabric around the ball. I love the sort of ruched quality that these ornaments have as well as the overhang of fabric I think adds a really nice overall texture. DIY number six brings us to making some glittery pine cones. So to start, this inspiration comes from Pottery Barn. They are each $9.50 for the larger pine cones or the picks are just $4.50. So I decided I was just gonna go in my backyard, find some pine cones, and then I do spray mine down with an alcohol-based solution just to kill anything that might be living inside. And then I let those dry before adding the glitter glue. So this glitter glue actually came from Dollar General as well, but as I looked at more images from the inspiration picture, I noticed that theirs had so much more glitter than mine did. So I decided to add a lot more glitter using just dry glitter this time and just kind of shaking it on and then I shook it off to remove the excess. Project number seven brings me to making these white ribbon ornaments inspired by something I saw on Pottery Barn's website. These ornaments were the most expensive on Pottery Barn's website and they were $19.50 a piece. Now these ornaments are much larger in scale than mine are, so do keep that in mind. The first thing I did was I found, again, a bag of clear ornaments for just $2 as well as some smaller white ribbon that I will use for the top piece in order to hang it. So I did find these pearls at the Dollar Tree as well as this white ribbon at the Dollar Tree and that is what we will be filling these ornaments with. In order to keep it somewhat consistent, I did decide to cut my ribbon sections off at the same section every single time so that way at least the same amount of fabric would be in there, even if it did decide to lay a little bit differently each time. And then I just evenly distributed one bag of pearls per each ornament and then capped them off with the original caps that these ones came with as silver was the color of the caps from the Pottery Barn inspiration as well. And then it's just time to wrap it up. Like I said, I'm going to be using ribbon from now on when I'm hanging ornaments from my tree to get that really high end look. And these are how they turned out.
One thing that I really love that Pottery Barn carries during the holiday season are their festive dinnerware. So I love these plates, love the mugs. They're always so gorgeous, but I ended up finding a set of two of these at the thrift store, each just 50 cents a piece. And I'm actually just going to make an ornament out of it. So if ever you find a piece of decor that you really like at the thrift store, if it's small enough, maybe consider making it into an ornament just to give it a fun festive flair. The ribbon actually came from the bells in the first DIY project and that really wrapped up this project. I love the sort of unexpectedness and just kind of thinking outside the box in projects like these. So I hope this inspired you to also try something new. And for the final DIY project, I know I already shared these from CB2 with you, but I kind of wanted to try a different method of doing this. So I also made a set of six of these kind. So in order to get this kind of more subdued look where the swirls aren't so evident, I decided I was going to try adding paint on the inside of the clear ornaments instead. So the first thing I did was I added my light color, which is Warm Buff by Apple Barrel. The black paint I used actually just came from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to dilute these ever so slightly just so they're a bit more runny. To the black paint, I did add this gold leaf paint that I've had in my stash for a while now and I'm gonna mix those two together just to give a sort of like shimmery black quality so it is a little bit metallic still in the end. After I was able to achieve a more runny consistency with both colors, it's just time now to fill it inside the ornament. And the reason I really did this was because I wanted that still shiny exterior, almost like a true marble would be. So I first started off by adding the darker color, which is that metallic-y black. And after I was able to fill it up just a little bit, I swirled that color around the inside of the ornament. And there is a translucency to that, but, but once you continue to add the rest of your colors, it starts to kind of fill itself in more. So then I'm just going to take the lighter of the two colors and add that color in, and again, kind of swirl it around. Once I realize that the ornament is completely covered in paint, I then flip it upside down and I let the excess kind of just fall out. I usually just leave it there until the drips kind of stop. And then you just wanna flip it right side up so you can allow the air to kind of get to it in order for it to totally dry. I ended up spray painting the caps of these ones black, again, to give it that much more modern effect. And this was the end result. And that about wraps it up for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments which DIY ornament was your favorite. And I will see you guys next Sunday so we can do some CB2 thrifted dupes. I hope you all have an amazing week and I will see you then. Bye.